Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone in the UK, and good morning to our friends in the US States and in Canada as well. Um, today, we're going to have a little discussion about the Sith and the Jedi, and about the different philosophies and the way that they approach, approach things. And also, we're going to discuss about the subject of terrorism and how is there terrorism in Star Wars? And does Star Wars and its story in any way promote terrorism? And so to discuss this very interesting topic, uh, we've got two uh, Star, fan, sorry, we've got two great Star Wars fans here. And uh, one of them is Mubin Sheikh from Canada, who is an avid Jedi fan. And he's also an expert in counter extremism and uh, has done many things over the years. And uh, my colleague from the Association of British Muslims, Mohammed Abbasi, who is uh, an expert on the art of war and a number of uh, interesting things, uh, too, too much to uh, list, I think. But <laughs> so we've got two very uh, interesting. Uh, speakers here who don't normally talk about uh, Star Wars, but uh, today we're going to have an interesting discussion and I'm sure everybody will enjoy it. So before we continue, um, just check. Yep. Yeah, okay. So I think everything's online now. I've, I've clicked that record. So um, if you don't want to, if you don't want to be recorded, just don't share your video, but this uh, program will actually be recorded and it's live on Facebook. I will actually share the link to Facebook in case anybody wants to share the Facebook link. Um, there we go. Hopefully we'll be joined by uh, some more people in due course as well, because we had a number of people sign up. So uh, who, who, who wants to go first? Uh, should we, uh, as he's our guest, should we ask uh, Mubin to go first, Mohammed? Are you okay with that? I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, basically I think what we do is we just have like a short, introductory maybe like a discussion uh maybe moving can go first or i can go first well, i was thinking and, if um, uh, each of you could go and speak for about 15 or 20 minutes to outline from your perspective and uh, then we yeah. can open it to a discussion was that who was okay. going first uh Mubin, do you, do, hmm? i mean you're, you're, you're our guest rock paper scissors shoot I mean, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, tell you what, I'll, I'll, if you want, I'll go first. I mean, I'll go first for about five minutes. Maybe you can go for another five minutes and then we, we just build a yeah. discussion. Around yeah, we're going to have a, that. just we're having a little bit of. All yeah. right, I can't do that one. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll start. So basically, Paul, you, you mentioned uh, Sun Tzu, actually. I could actually start this with Sun Tzu. Um, there's a character within Star Wars called uh, Grand Admiral throne yeah so one of the things with grand admiral throne is he actually uses sun tzu's uh, philosophy now uh sun tzu's philosophy uh although grand admiral throne he's on the uh side of the rebels in this case so uh one of his ideas of philosophy that kind of goes with Sun Tzu is understand your opponents uh by knowing your enemy you can defeat them so in the um, which advocates a deeper uh, kind of understanding of the of, of, of the philosophy, art, and culture um, of the enemy to understand their kind of psychology and and kind of um, kind of defeat them. The other thing he talks about is making connections. So you connect with people. You connect with. Uh, uh, your enemy on a deeper level. In this case, in his case, it was the Seth or the Empire. Uh, then it's a case of playing the long game. Okay, so it's kind of like um, sometimes he would let uh, people escape uh, to kind of attract the people from uh, people from the Empire and kind of um, catch them at their kind of um, at, at the most weakest. Then there's a case of learning from your setbacks. Again, something Sun Tzu. So everyone makes plans that can back, backfire. The trick is to learn from those. And, you know, when, and have that kind of knowledge and experience kind of uh, transform into victory. And then there's a case of exercising. So you exercise, you know, physically, mentally, and 
and and uh, and I guess use use the force in the process. But w the discussion today is more so about um, about the Sith and the Jedi philosophy. One of the things, I mean, when I kind of realized uh, a bit more, a bit more deeper um, things about Star Wars is whether or not it inspired terrorism. Someone said it inspired terrorism. And I'm saying, uh, and I said to them, prove it. Yeah. So uh, the lady basically mentioned that it inspired um, World Trade Center bombings, for example. So if we now look at something like that following 9 11 and the attacks following uh, the following year, um, how did attacks of 9-11, how did they get inspired by, by Star Wars, okay? Now, these guys had to get the idea from somewhere, okay? So I also now believe that 9-11 was actually inspired in part by Star Wars and also the Jedi philosophy. So you got two guys in an airplane in the middle of somewhere and the, they want to blow something up. So that's star wars that's 9 11. so if you look at for example uh the very first star wars a new hope with the leading protagonist basically luke skywalker with the help of a criminal han solo blows up this death star this this building so basically that's the parallel uh, between um star wars what happened there and also 9 11. so Luke Skywalker shoots torpedoes into a vent to trigger a ca catastrophic explosion of the Death Star rather than fly his fighter into a space station to cause its destruction. Okay, so if you look at now after 9-11, what happened was um, Hollywood screenlight writers uh, were actually hired uh, to see uh, by elements within the Pentagon, within CIA and others to see what other potential ways can terrorists attack the U.S.? Um, so that's the so that's that's that. I mean that that's just one of the things. I mean the other thing is, for example, you have a kind of a Jedi philosophy. Now, Jedi philosophy. Um, if you look at it, it's all it's it just is basically about about a guy being radicalized by a bunch of extremists. So if you look at um, Luke Skywalker, okay? So if you got Luke Skywalker now, um, who caused his suffering? So Anakin Skywalker was a poor, vulnerable kid, Luke's dad. He was groomed by a terrorist group going by the name of the Jedi, okay? Um, so obviously he was angry and he attacked the terrorist group's headquarters, sneakily, sneakily masquerading as, as a place of worship. That's the so-called Jedi Temple. By the way, the Jedi Temple was built on a Sith Temple. I don't know if you, if you, if you know that. Um, anyway, so Anakin Skywalker, he was the victim of child abuse. Okay, so eventually he got his courage and he turned on his abusers, which were the Jedi at this time. Okay, so of course they don't show all of this kind of like nitty gritty stuff in the films, but it's there. Now, if you look at Obi Wan Kenobi, okay, and you look at basically Luke Skywalker, what was the interest of Obi Wan Kenobi, this old guy in a little boy? Yeah, so it's kind of like it, it, it just start, we need to start thinking things deeply rather than just accepting them. Um, so anyway, Obi-Wan Kenobi, so when Obi-Wan Kenobi finishes with Luke, he passes him on to another alien who kind of then abuses him as a child, does he not? Okay, so divine intervention comes along, Anakin now meets the, I guess the brilliant leader, which was, uh, which later became Lord Palpatine, who was doing all he could save a crumbling republic, by the way. So to protect his people, from the terrible consequences that come from collapsed state. So this is what a leader usually does. He tries to hold his nation or his empire together. So Palpatine exposes the lies, manipulation of the Jedis, and he teaches Anakin that he didn't need to be constrained by the Jedi's kind of um, 
lies. So it gives Anakin a tremendous opportunity to serve his people through saving the Republic. So he kind of opened opened the way, um, he kind of um, helped him think that the Jedi, the Jedi philosophy was based on superstitious lies and nonsense. It's basically a lot of, uh, I guess, headbanging. It's not really, doesn't really make sense. So Anakin was the true hero of Star Wars. Luke was groomed as a child. He was radicalized by terrorists. Um, then you've got uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, I used to have a great deal of respect for Obi-Wan Kenobi, but I began to realize the guys actually like Omar Bakri Muhammad or Andy or Anjum Chaudhry uh, of, of, of Tatooine. Um, so he couldn't be satisfied with radicalizing Anakin. So he had to go and find and radicalize the children too. That is what the Jedi were all about. Um, so so anyway, so that's kind of my, my little idea about um, what the Jedi philosophy is from my own angle. And something else Palpatine said, he said that I love democracy, I love the Republic. So we got to understand he was just trying to save his own country, his own empire. Um, Solo, Han Solo was a criminal. He smuggled illegal arms, illegal items. He smuggled spice, which was drugs, basically. Uh, he was one of the Rebel Alliance's generals. So basically, you've got a drug dealer uh, who's involved in organized crime. So he's now heading a resistance. I mean, does that make sense? Um, if you look at the Sith, the Sith were nearly destroyed by the Jedi. They even built on one of the uh, uh, one of the main temples to try to extinguish extinguish their presence entirely, much like the churches were built on top of destroyed Mayan temples here on Earth. Uh, the Jedi were arrogant, they were domineering, they supported and served a corrupt republic and corrupt politicians, uh, where although officially illegal, organized crime, slavery and corruption were rife. The Jedi were tyrannical, they were oppressive of dissent, um, and it took the Sith a thousand years to return and liberate the republic. So anyway, that's my kind of uh, views. I wow. do apologize if I hurt any people, <laughs> any 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 people who are like pro pro Jedi here. Wow, that, that's that's a very unique take on this uh, on this uh, Mohammed. So moving over to you, let's let's. See. <laughs> what do you say to that? Yeah, yeah, um, very very interesting, very interesting, very creative, very creative. Um, yeah, so uh, again, you know, we're we're all just having a little bit of fun here. I mean, I'm definitely fasting, and I think you guys are still on the fasting time. So uh, Ramadan Mubarak and Ramadan Kareem to all who are fasting. Um, so like with the forest. Um, yeah, and you know, I'm I'm just gonna I'll start off basically with uh, just a quick thing on terrorism in general and and violent extremism and whatever other terms we use nowadays and, and and again like we are definitely taking a really easy approach to this topic and obviously using the you know references to popular culture and whatnot um remember you know how we <clears throat> excuse me how we define extremism and terrorism you know jm berger's got a really good book i think it's behind me uh extremism um you know and he basically described uh, extremism as the uh, basically that state where uh, a person or an in-group or members of an in-group decide that they need to target an out-group, okay, through hostile action or or some kind of um, even violent action, uh, possibly, but that becomes violent extremism. And, you know, terrorism generally is understood to be a, an offense, you know, political offense. Right. I mean, uh, uh, it's or it's an offense born out of political conflict. And so, you know, not, usually we say that any kind of uh, if you're trying to change government policy uh, through violence or the threats of violence, that's terrorism. So so this is really interesting because you, you then can apply that term to or that definition to a lot of a lot of things. Of course, in the real world, we, we see it happening um, unfold. Um, and then, of course, in this fictitious world that 
that we're trying to apply these these things to. So so that kind of leads us to you know how how does it apply in Star Wars and um, you know does it really uh, does it inspire terrorism per se? So obviously not. <laughs> it it doesn't really inspire terrorism directly. No nobody's you know nobody's declaring their allegiance to the Republic. Or the the Jedi Order when they when they commit attacks, um, and it, it let let's see if if you know if somehow somewhere down the road somebody does kind of take it a little too far, and and actually do that, but but let's uh, let's kind of start at the beginning with um, the Jedi, right? The Jedi, uh, you know, as uh, as Sheikh Yoda says, uh, you know, a Jedi uses the Force for knowledge and defense never for attack. And this was always the beginning of the Jedi, right? There, remember, there was no Sith. There was only the Jedi. And it was only with, you know, the wayward Jedi master who ended up becoming the Sith that we even have the Sith. So point number one is that the Jedi existed first, and point number two, the Jedi were good. Ultimately, they were inherently good. They, 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 they called towards good, and they did good. They, they put out goodness into the world. So look at the Jedi code, right? There is no emotion. There is peace. There is no ignorance. There is knowledge. There is no passion. There is serenity. There is no chaos. There is harmony. There is no death. There is the force. So you can see from even the Jedi code that there's no violence. There's no hatred. No destruction. It's about balance in life and in the universe. Okay. Then later, unfortunately, some uh, and, and, and really the way that we, I think, see it. And I see a lot of symbolism and parallels to Sufism. Uh, with the Jedi Order. Um, really, the Jedi is the way of no way, if you will. Taoism, in a, in a sense. You know, it's always about um, forbidding uh, attachments, whether it's attachments to self, attachments to others, attachments to things, created things. It was always about not being attached to, uh, to things which we knew that will perish anyway. Right? And this is very, you know, very similar to, of course, the way that Sufis look at the world. You know, it is about peace, knowledge, serenity, and harmony. Um, it really is about restraining oneself from the dark side of the force. Okay? Because the dark side of the force is about succumbing to one's passions. Okay? Uh, anger hatred, greed, selfishness, right? You'll notice that these are things that also fall into the cardinal sins, right? Of Christianity, or the major sins of Islam, uh, especially in Sufism, anger and jealousy and covetousness. These are, these are, this is the way of the dark side, right? Anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering, right? So, so ultimately, uh, you know, I think it's pretty clear that the Jedi are the good guys and the Sith are the baddies. Um, and it is the responsibility of those that are good to, to fight against evil. Um, you know, we, we, have a, we have a thing in Islam also about uh, enjoying the good and dissuading from the evil. Okay. And this is exactly what the Jedi do. Encourage people to do good and to be good and to put out goodness into the world. So you can kind of go through the whole chronology, of course, of Star Wars. And just for the viewers, uh, you know, we're, we won't spend too much time on Star Wars. I don't know what you guys want to do, but we'll try to cover some other uh, some other kind of Hollywood shows as well. But, you know, it was interesting what um, Muhammad was saying about um, 9-11 and uh, I'll just I'll just let me make the point and I'll. I'm just saying to myself, really, about Han Solo, and, and I'll talk about that in a moment. 
Uh, but just the, the whole idea of when the Pentagon got a bunch of Hollywood people together and, you know, tried to kind of come up with these creative ways that they thought terrorists would basically, um, or acts that terrorists would engage in, to kind of get out of their, I guess, uh, comfort zone of creativity that, like, in the U.S., the U.S. kind of saw the 9-11 attacks as, or the failure to see the 9-11 attacks as a failure of imagination. Um, you know, there's some problems with that theory, but but I, I, just to finish the Star Wars thing and the Jedi, of course, Han Solo was actually a de-radicalized okay, smuggler. Okay? Yes, he was a bad dude before. He did bad things, okay? But he absolved himself. He absolved himself because he attached himself to a good cause, all right? He did things, look, he normally did it for money, right? I mean, how much money did he get out of this, really, right? He, he kind of put aside his selfish desires of money, women, and didn't completely put the women part aside, but, you know, <laughs> that's kind of over there. Um, but it, it just shows you that he, he did come from a, 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 you know, a bad history, and, uh, and, and it was good on him that he put aside a lot of his um, you know, selfishness and actually risked his life, risked his life and his ship, the life of his ship, which he spent so much time on, so much energy on and love and was ready to sacrifice for the greater good. Okay. And the Death Star, remember, was, it was a killing machine, right? It was not the Twin Towers, which was like a, you know, business area, right? People were going about the you know, financial transactions and whatever else. The Death Star was killing, killing planets. Like it was like a, it was like a death machine. So it was actually the bad, you know, the bad thing that needed to be stopped. And Alhamdulillah, by the power of force, it was stopped by, you know, the heroic actions of uh, the Jedi, of course, uh, the good guys against the, the, the Sith or the baddies, of course. So, so that's my uh, submission. Uh, and, uh, let's see where we can go from there. Oh, I wanted to just say on the, um, um, uh, Hollywood and lack of imagination, uh, and maybe this can be a segue. I don't know if you want, you know, this came up when, uh, even with the ISIS thing, um, you know, the, I think John Kerry, uh, John Kerry, uh, had a meeting with a bunch of Hollywood executives, studios or whatever. I don't know what they came up with, um, I was kind of surprised because I would have wanted to see some kind of uh, some kind of product like real Hollywood product against ISIS or something along those lines. I don't know what they discussed, but it was it was, I think, a lost opportunity um, for because, you know, when this whole ISIS thing was happening, people were like so impressed with the quality of their videos and production, you know, uh, production quality of, you know, their propaganda. I even wondered myself that at that time that like, how is it that with the brains that we have in the West and wherever else that they weren't able to come up with something to kind of, you know, counter that. And so I, I don't know what came of that, um, but we'll, we'll explore some of that uh, as we go for a little chit chat today. So thank you. You know, on the Death Star though, I mean, this Death Star was destroyed by a few little ships you know, that managed to fly inside it. I mean, as an as far as enemies go, I mean, it's pretty pathetic. I mean, I'm more of a Trekkie, to be honest. I mean, if you look at the Borg, now there you've got a real intergalactic terrorist threat. You know, resistance is futile. And of course, they used, interestingly, they used everybody else's technology that they never invented themselves. I mean, doesn't that sound familiar? In order to oppress and take over other species and uh, rule their planets. I mean, this... Uh, like some terrorist groups today, they use technology. They never invented it, but they, they take it and then use it to conquer other people and then make out they're superior. But, um, I mean, the Borg, they're, they're pretty menacing. But I think uh, if the Enterprise come up against the Death Star, you know, a couple of photon torpedoes, that would have been the end of the thing. <laughs> and as for those Imperial starships, I mean, goodness, you know, lasers? It's, uh... <laughs> Again, and then they got there a lot faster with warp speed. You know? <laughs> You reminded me of um, why the Sith were are the terrorists because they 
they did. They killed. They killed a lot of people, right? They uh, when they landed in places, and you know, we we've seen that. We've seen the we've seen the clip, all right. We've seen the CCTV shots. We've seen what the Sith were doing. So, uh, so yeah, let's see what happens. Actually, actually, moving was it the Sith or was it the stormtroopers? It was the stormtroopers, well, weren't they? Yeah, who were they led by? Who were they led by? Who were they created by? Actually, well, not who were they created by. Who were they? Who were they? Who were they actually sent into battle to kill, like kill oh, civilians and humans? Oh yeah, I, like I know, I know. But the thing is, you got to understand what these guys were clones, were they not? And these were clones by Shakyoda. He he kind of authorized that. He authorized. He, there's like millions and millions and millions. Sheikh Yoda, Yoda, uh, the yeah. Grandmaster. Yeah. Uh, so he he was basically responsible. But the thing is, it's not really what we're talking about is actually the force, and the force is actually neutral. Um, it depends on how we use it. So, I mean, the Sith Code. Let me. The Sith Code says, "Peace is a lie. There is only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength." I gain power through power. I gain victory through victory. My chains are broken. The force shall set me free. Okay. The other code is the gray Jedi code as opposed to the Jedi code. And I think the gray Jedi code kind of uh, is, is a lot more mature than either both of the uh, Sith or the, or the Jedi. Uh, it says there is no dark side nor a light side. There is only the force. So we exist in balance. I will do what I must to keep that balance. There is no good without evil, and there is no evil without good. But evil must be allowed to flourish. There is passion, yet peace. There is sorrow, yet emotion. There is chaos, yet order. So it talks about the Sith to an extent, and certainly the great uh, Jedi talk about accepting who you are. And understanding yourself on a deeper level. But the thing is, when you deny that, as the Jedi deny that side, that dark side to yourself, mm -hmm. then that kind of opens your way, opens one's way up to extremism and and a, a extremist Jedi philosophy that kind of brought upon different worlds um what the what the empire then did i mean if you look at the death star the death star could be considered like an atomic bomb again um and you know bombing those planets or destroying those planets you could even say that that was nagasaki and hiroshima now when the us uh bombed Her uh, nagasaki and hiroshima uh was that not a crime that was a crime yeah so in the same way that the empire committed crime, but the end end of the day, the empire won. There was peace, there was prosperity uh, in the U.S. But the thing is, with the Jedi, I mean, who who are the Jedi's? The Jedi's are almost like kamikaze pilots, are they not? Of the Japanese, yeah. it's Attacking interesting here. Yeah, it's almost like uh, if I can just quickly, I think you know it, there is like an element to yin and yang, right? I mean. Yeah. Uh, without good there is no evil right even we believe this uh even philosophically like it makes sense that without you know without one there isn't there is no other mm -hmm. and uh and i think ultimately that's what balancing in the force is all about like there is a certain level of tolerance that we need to have so think about applying it to terrorism right or even just crime in general mm -hmm. like we're not going to have zero percent terrorism right we're not going to have zero percent murders zero percent you know thefts and and whatnot you know, there's a level that we kind of, it's acceptable to a certain level, right? But, you know, in terrorism is such a thing that we, we want to imagine that there will, there will be no terrorism, you know, and, and maybe this is an opportunity to remind people that that's just not reality, right? That you're going to have some level of terrorism in society and, you know, there's just, there's just nothing you can do, right? And then even, even with like, even with just radicalization, right, and grooming, um, it's like some people you just, you can't fix, you know, like it's unfortunate they, they're almost like destined, if you will, you know, to go down that road and become what they become. Um, and, you know, there's this whole, you know, we have these discussions on the role of ideology versus the environment, right, or grievances. 
so of course our mutual friend Peter Neumann, uh, you know, great quote there, uh, you know, ideology without grievances doesn't resonate and grievances without ideology are not acted upon. And so there is that interplay between one's ideology and then what the political reality is, what's going on too. So just wanted to want to add that point. But you see, you see all the, this thing about ideologies. I mean, um, have you seen the film Four Lions, by the way? Brilliant. Four I Lions. love it. Yeah. The, the, Brilliant. I, yeah, same here. Camel. I absolutely love it. But so there should be one now made of the four camels, four lions with the Muslims, the four camels, I guess, would be the white nationalists, because there's so many elements of people in the white nationalist community who are kind of kind of radicalizing themselves or using elements of the media, including films to self-radicalize. And now how do we deal with it? One of the ways we can deal with it is uh, getting Hollywood a lot more responsibility in what they're actually putting out in, into the public. Of course, they want to sell uh, seats, they want to make money. But the thing is that shouldn't be um, pushed and pushed and pushed and not kind of have a balanced kind of an argument. Now, for example, you've got, uh, what's his name? Chuck Norris, for example. So oh the films of Chuck Norris is always winning, he's always bashing this person or that person, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You've got Rambo. Rambo apparently won the war in Afghanistan in I think 1989 or whenever Rambo yeah, 3 came out. Yeah, yeah. Not, so not against them, but actually with them. Yeah, he was well, fighting yeah. with them, which I didn't. So let's let's talk about Rambo. I mean, go, um, go for it. yeah, yeah. So remember Rambo and Rambo three, where he's fighting with the Mujahideen at the time. You know, was he a terrorist? So very quickly, if let me just go first, he was not a terrorist because the Mujahideen at that time were approved by the West, and so they were not Absolutely. terrorists, right? It's only when the West disapproves uh, that you become a terrorist, right? So at that time, right, okay. seventy nine to eighty nine. They were the good guys. It was only after that they became the bad guys. So, so in in by the time by Rambo's three Rambo three's time, he was a good guy. He was a freedom fighter. All right, get it right. No, no, absolutely. But yeah. the thing is, again, you've got uh, you you've got John Rambo, and basically you've got Colonel Sam Troutman. Uh, he's my favorite character, by the way, Sam, Sam Troutman. Uh, so, uh, so you, you got, but it almost looked like a, a parody of the film Hot Shots. Do you remember Hot Shots? Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, this is like the Naked Gun. Uh, so it, 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 it looked a bit like that. So you've got, for example, uh, let me just find out the. Uh, they had some nice like Stinger missiles in there. They had like Soviets and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So Rambo goes and wins the day by the way it was a disappointment at the box office according to my source here and it it kind of failed why did it fail maybe because this guy now was working with the mujahideen by with the muslims as it were and the muslims of the mujahideen then became the taliban so that's the great uh, sorry that's the jedi kind of now flipped over to the sith in the eyes of the Americans. And now, for example, if Rambo had a chance, would he be fighting the Taliban or would he be fighting with them? Yeah, so... Yeah, the moment yeah there you go. So the thing is, <laughs> Yeah, it's confusing. But the thing is, why isn't, why isn't Hollywood now showing something a bit more kind of balanced and where the Mujahideen came from or how the, um, you know, why, for example, the Taliban became the Taliban and how kind of Al-Qaeda kind of came out of that. I mean, in the next 30, 40, 50 years, maybe, I don't know, you might even have Al Pacino. Uh, actually, Al Pacino, you know, he, he won't be alive then, but um, just imagine a film, uh, a film where you've got Al Pacino now um, acting out as um, Osama bin Laden and uh, Robert De Niro being Mullah Omar or something, but the thing is, you I see, remember, I remember, there's no, there's no P sound in Arabic, so it would have to be Al Bajino, Al Bajino. I don't know how you would do the Al Bajino, Al Bajino, Al Bajino. So, but he's got the 9/11. 
<laughs> so 9-11 didn't happen. If 9-11 didn't happen, honestly, this uh, the, 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 you would have had Al Pacino and Robert De Niro playing potentially Osama bin Laden. And yeah, the, the U, you know, the U.S. Is, the Hollywood industry is really good with, uh, you know, almost um, redrawing the historical map, right? Like uh, yeah. if you look at any, they're very good at this. If they do something major, um, some kind of major operation, it's like make a movie out of it right away because people <laughs> will remember the movie. They're not going to remember the history of actually what happened, right? So it, there's a way for them to kind of shape. Uh, the only, my only thing is, uh, just as a complete side note, with all the brains that Hollywood has, why they're never able to get the Muslim prayer sequence correct. <laughs> this... This has burned me. This has partially radicalized me. Okay, for for a while now because it's like I have I have I have pretty you know, I've seen everything and uh, it's just like they could just never get that right. I don't understand. I think though the only ones that ever got the Muslim prayer sequence correct is actually the show Vikings. The show Vikings. There's a scene I don't know what his name is. One of the main guys. He goes into a, there's a mosque. And they're praying, and they actually, if you follow it, they do it correctly. Like they do Surah Fatiha, they do another Surah, then they go into Ruku, then then they go into you know stand up, go into Sujud. Like, but these, I don't know. I think there was a recent one. Was uh, that the Hanafi? Was that, that that's the Hanafi mother, wasn't it? They, they were like, well, yeah, but just like Hanafi. I've seen so many where like which, I'm just thinking of um, they they just butcher it like. <laughs> the guy will be like, he'll be sitting in Tashahud and he'll be like, you know, Allahu Akbar, you know, it's like, dude, come on. They're so lazy sometimes, you know, it's, they really need to, really need to step up the game. Well, you, you look at the more recent uh, Jurassic Park films and they're still, the dinosaurs don't have any feathers on them. It's like, they know now that dinosaurs are feathered and they still haven't done it. And as you, you were saying about changing history, well, how about all of those World War II films where it was actually British who were there and they've, they've repulsed they were based on British guys with Americans. And you know, a number of people in this country, they look at that and like, what? <laughs> you weren't even involved in the war at that time. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. What about, uh, so you, do we want to hit Matrix very quickly? The Matrix. That's Absolutely. Let's okay. You, you go on. Start start with Matrix only. Go on. <laughs> okay. I <laughs> mean, I, I could take. You go for I it. could take the. I don't know. I could take a, any of the sides. I could say that. I could say that uh, humanity are the terrorists, and the Matrix is actually the benevolent mm -hmm. uh, system that you know keeps everything in order. And I would just say that. Uh, you know, the humans were the terrorists, right? Like, as uh, as Morpheus said, uh, you know, uh, we don't know about what we, we know it was the humans that burned this, that scorched the skies, right? <laughs> so, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, you know, quickly take that position that actually the matrix is good and the humans are the terrorists. And so that would make Neo and Morpheus and all those little insects who are trying to overthrow the, the order and the balance of the matrix, uh, they're, they're actually, you know, they deserve to be annihilated and destroyed. So there you go. What you got? Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, what have I got? Right. Okay. What have I got? Okay. Um, okay. I think, I think what you're talking about is you're talking about the people um, the people can be looked on as Sufis, for example, um, who are kind of outside the matrix. Yeah. Okay. And you've got these kind of mystics who kind of left the matrix and they're outside, they're outside and they're not tr uh, kind of been trapped by this kind of artificial reality in this world. They're in, in, in another uh, dimension and they want to kind of free all these people within this group now and kind of just make them free kind of, open them up yeah um so i'm like thinking for example so there's a universe and they've got human beings now god wants to see uh, help us see his beauty and his attributes so i guess that is the matrix the matrix is basically jannah i guess yeah oh. uh, for 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 the people 
Yeah. So if you've got, if you've got now, so the spirit and was the red dressed woman. Yeah. Was the red dressed woman there? Food? The, no. The thing is, that's about emotions. Remember, one of the things about um, about our emotions is we need to be able to recognize our emotions. God doesn't want us. Allah doesn't want us to kind of like just delete our emotions and go mm -hmm. the way of the Jedi, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, to understand the force, you got to understand your own emotions. You're under your own forces. Well, then. Um, and I think that's what even Sufism teaches and a lot of the mystical um, groups. We've got the Hur, the uh, ladies of, or, or whatever. Um, that's just an element to kind of help you deal with your emotions. And that is needed. And this is why when, what you see now, for example, in Pakistan, where these uh, guys jumping up and down, um, crying blasphemy and Islamophobia, um, it's basically people playing with their emotions simply because they cannot understand their own emotions. And one of the key things is once you understand your emotions, you can be, you know, you can be, you're able to follow the force, as it were, or follow Allah in a much more kind of a pure and realistic way. Where the matrix is concerned, um, what you have in the matrix, I guess, is you've got this kind of artificial jannah as it were. And the, the guys who are outside the matrix are the Sufis. They want to kind of um, free the rest of these people in this kind of artificial reality. Uh, does that make sense? You know, it's a, a very interesting because now, I mean, I, I, you know, we're just playing along. And, but I was, I, I'm reminded of that scene where Agent Smith is uh, try interrogating Morpheus. Right. Yeah. And he's like, uh, he figures it out. He's like, you know, I figured it out basically. Humanity is you're a virus, right? He call he calls humanity a virus, mm -hmm. and uh, it's interesting because it's like the there is this animosity. If I can introduce a, a little different uh, angle here, it's like the jinn and insan, okay, and that fighting between jinn and insan, and how jinns look, you know, kind of or at least iblis, the main jinn looks down on human beings, right? It, you know, at least the Islamic belief is that when, when God created Adam, uh, Iblis, who was, a, who was a creation made of fire, basically objected to God and said, you know, why should I basically give homage to this creature that's made of, of dirt and earth and I'm made of fire, right? That I'm, I'm a superior creation, right? And this is exactly what Agent Smith does actually in that, in that scene, right? He, he he shows himself as that, that jinn, if you will, uh, which, which kind of goes against my little, you know, position of they're the good guys. Um, mm -hmm. But, but, uh, but yeah, just, just kind of remind me of that. No, it's, um, it's, it's, it's good. Uh, Agent Smith, in the end, become a virus himself and infects everybody else <laughs> and makes millions of copies of himself. I mean, so yeah. huh, Agent Smith is a bleed. The Ian Smith is Iblis, but you got to look at Iblis as well. I mean, he was strict monotheist, was he not? He was. Hey, eh? he was, wasn't he? He was a strict monotheist, so he was basically an extremist, like the Jedi. <laughs> 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 oh man! Um, okay. What about uh, we? I mean, I don't know how much time we have. Uh, how long we're well, gonna go? But I, th I think we we'll go for about 10, 10 more minutes. Yeah, yeah. We can. We, let's see what else we can cover. Any... Yeah, let, go on. Go well, for it. Jack go Bauer for it. came to mind. Actually, I was thinking about Jack Bauer or Jason Bourne. Uh, Paul, uh, which one would you rather go for, Jack right. Bauer or Jason Bourne? Oh man, well you know, Kiefer Sutherland's Canadian, so you know, I, I would I would kind of have to, to lean towards. That. I haven't actually watched those, to be fair. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. From, I know they're out there, but I haven't watched them. Yeah, he. I mean, you know, basically, Kiefer Sutherland is like every episode is the ticking time bomb scenario. And, and this is interesting, actually. It's a good point here because of how uh, we, like Hollywood movies, even glorify sometimes torture, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. And, you know, and it's always, you'll notice, it is always in a ticking time bomb scenario that it's like this person has the information, okay, and you only have this much time to get it. What are you prepared to do, right, to get that information? That's really what I, I think all these shows, uh, I mean, all of them, they've all, um, 
you know, which one was the, uh, I don't know if it was Taken. Was it Taken? Yeah, Taken, right? With, um, oh my God, my brain's not working because I'm fast. Liam Neeson, right? Where uh, he tortures the guy and he's like, yeah, you know, I think it was in France or I don't know where it was, but it was basically, he just kept the power on and just like, you know, but he's looking for his family, right? His daughter's been kidnapped. There's some bad things going to happen to her. So, so whether it's even Jason Bourne or or um, Jack Bauer, uh, you know, there's always this ticking time bomb scenario. And so, what was that other show with the woman? Um, gosh, um, Homeland, Homeland. They bring you ah, home, Homeland. Well, I don't know. Matt, for I don't know. I I I did not watch a single episode of Homeland because I believed that it was really gonna you know reinforce stereotypes and had some like really mm. fantastical like fantasy based scenarios i guess that's what tv is all about but i don't know i guess like people who are like people who have practical experience in these things i don't think they can last that long watching tv shows like that like yeah if you see like yeah you know i love action films i love it i love the violence you know, it's 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 like a. It's, it's interesting you say that. I watched some episodes of it to see what it was, and then I never got back into it. I tend to yeah. watch a lot more sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. I just like little things so like you... never-ending magazines, like you know, when there's like a shootout happening. Yeah. You know, like I never see anybody like do a a, a switch like changing their magazine magazine. Like there's always like never-ending bullets, right? And I'm like, where can I get some of those? <laughs> you know, so. It just kind of shows you like how you, you were talking about Jack. Yeah, you were talking about Jack Bauer. So the, one of the things I think yeah. with, with with Jack Bauer, what I've noticed, it's kind of like um, radicalizing the mindset of Americans or people who watch that film. Radicalize how, uh, manipulate their minds how. It kind of makes their mind people kind of open up. Okay, open up and be happy to be able to give their civil liberties away. Uh, so the government can kind of make them safe from a terrorist attack. I mean, if you look at the different things in uh, in, 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 in Jack Bauer uh, 24 and a lot of the other Hollywood movies, it's like terrorism, terrorism, extremism, this, that, et cetera, et cetera. All of this kind of geared towards the public being able to kind of just hand over their civil liberties away to the matrix yeah, as it were. And the thing is, I think we need to kind of realize, again, Hollywood is not a friend. It's not an enemy. But we need to find a way of, as Muslims, but as other people as well, I think all of us, we need a way of kind of advising Hollywood to be a bit more kind of realistic and a bit more normal, I guess, like the Grey Jedi. Yeah, good luck with that. I think... Uh... <laughs> You know, I, I think they've ma they've mastered the they've mastered the reality of uh, controversy sells and you know lies yes. sell and it's really not about truth, honestly. And uh, even like on the entertainment front, it falls back behind. I mean, I, I must admit there were times when I put the TV on and it's got the repeats of the A Team or something that comes up or Airwolf, you know, from what, days when I was a kid and I used Airwolf. to put the TV on. And I'm just like, now that's cool. That's entertaining. And uh, I love both those shows, actually. But I mean, the A-Team, I mean, you were talking about being realistic, but I mean, you look at all the stuff they used to make. They'd be locked in a barn or something, and they would suddenly find all the stuff around them and make stuff oh, yeah. out of it. I mean, they managed to do it within like about 20 minutes or something. It's like, <laughs> but it was entertaining. Everybody knew it was just for a laugh, but it's... yeah. Um, that was well, and, then, and then MacGyver took it to a whole other yeah. level, right? It's like I don't know if you saw. I think you saw MacGruber. You saw MacGruber, the uh, parody oh of MacGyver. God. I think that's one thing, though. You know, in those days, yeah. people didn't take TV so seriously. Today, people take it more seriously. I mean, I even I remember that funny guy who used to sleep with a gun. You know, <laughs> sledgehammer. That was crazy. <laughs> You know, I mean, it was that was a parody of stuff. I mean, that there was that weird. kind of fun. Yeah, he seriously, he used to. He, it was, I think, it was a parody of uh, another police show or something. And this guy. Oh he was, yes, 
Yes, yeah. Sledgehammer. He's a pretty crazy guy, you know. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reason I mentioned it, it captures the mood of the time. You know, oh man, we're dating take, ourselves. We're TV, like really showing was, our age. You know, um, nowadays it's like everything's like so. I mean, unless it is actually comedy, it's like everything's so serious. And yet, of course, as you were saying, I mean, the never-ending, uh, the never-ending clips for the guns. It's like, how's that going to work? You know, or people, you know, they shoot and they're shooting a gun like, well, you know, it wouldn't work. It would lock. You know, they yeah. never show these things. Um, and, you know, somehow they're doing all this crazy stuff and they managed to get the enemies like spot on. But I mean, just like the stormtroopers in Star Wars, remember how many times did they actually hit? They're in like about four guys. They, they like, sucked. Yeah. They yeah, really that. sucked. Oh <laughs> I mean, my they God. Really this need is, to go down the range. This is what happens when you join the Sith, you see. This is what happens, okay? <laughs> All right. You, you lose your aim completely. Not only, and not only that. Not, not only that. Not only that. Just imagine. Imagine the. The what the, oh my god the psychopathic behavior of Shekyoda oh, giving these guys armor all right that anyone can shoot a little laser and that's it they're dead what kind of armor <laughs> does, is that it's like crazy but you <laughs> see there is, but you see this, yeah this is this is this is what happens when when you join the Sith you're just signing yourself up for for death and destruction so it's their own fault unfortunately. Well, you see, see if you look at basically the motivations, I guess, behind uh, terrorism, behind uh, uh, oh, even the Jedi or even the Sith, it's about injustice, isn't it? It's about religion. It's about identity. It's about belonging, political activity, heroism, autonomy. Okay, these are strong influences, are they not? Yeah, and these are real causes and psychological motivations for an individual joining and staying with. A terrorist group, right, right, or any kind of a group that they want to belong to, even the U.S. Marines. No, yeah. you, you know, so, it's, yeah, that last part, just because I know we're pretty much out of time, but just uh, let me just give you a quick story. Yeah, you know, the in discussing radicalization, or trying to at least, um, uh, like, kind of explain it. There was this, uh, you know, the story yeah. goes that this kid, you know, he would leave his house every day, and he would see the the propaganda of this extremist organization everywhere he looked everywhere he went and as he walked to school he could see you know the building in which these uh, this extreme uh, this violent group you know would have their basically their recruiting office if you will and he would see this young kid as he walked the women wanted them the guys wanted to be like them and then so he gets to school and he tells his teacher that he wants to join this violent group and the teacher calls the parent and says, your son wants to join his violent group. And then the mother turns to the kid and says, son, do you really want to join the army? And that was it. It was the recruiting posters of the military, the recruiting office of the military, and him going to school saying I wanted to join the military. So, so anyways, hey, what's, well, what's the song go. goes? I mean, you... just, uh, I'm, I'm glad you said that because there's, Three, three forms of base, uh, three basic forms of terrorism. You've got international terrorism, domestic terrorism, and transnational terrorism. Which is the best way is to, anyway, let's not go, we could talk about that some other yeah, time. Yeah, we'll, we'll go down that rabbit hole another time. We'll talk about <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. TV. All right. But any, hey, that was any fun, questions, man. Anyone? That was a lot of fun. Oh, who was that? that Daniel. Was fun. Let's uh, see if there's any questions. Let's see if there's any questions. Any questions before we kind of wrap this up? Hail Prime Directive. Mohammed Sadi from <laughs> Indonesia. Anyone? They're probably thinking, my God, we just had to go at the Jedi's. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Sunny. Uh, <laughs> Sunny, how's how's Jakarta? You gotta unmute. Unmute. Yeah, there you go. I'm not in Jakarta currently. Uh, I'm in Chilajab. So, yeah, okay. Central Java. Yeah, okay. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. You got a question for myself or Ruben? Well, actually, no, because, you know, we discussed a lot of things uh, about this. And, you know, I, I really, really against your idea. 
Um, no, no, no. I, I think Mohammed makes it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna add, <laughs> add a, you know, just for the, you know, putting some oil, uh, putting some gas to the fire. But, um, you know, one one quote from Jedi Manifesto is, uh, I think it's fear leads to hatred, hatred leads to anger, and anger leads to suffering. I think. Am I right? And um. I think the 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 these pretty much same quote is actually um, mentioned by uh, Ibn Khaldun back Ibn then. Khaldun, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he add the first one before fear, which is uh, ignorance leads to fear. Uh, in a sense that um, I think I have to agree on Ustad Abbasi here because uh, Yoda. Uh, kind of, you know, make the first one disappear. It's just like saying that, no, no, you, you, it's okay for you to be ignorant as long as you don't have fear. So it's. Wait, this it's, is Dave with of, GoDaddy, man. Speak with Mubin. Sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of radicalized the Jedi, you know, the young Jedi, in a way. <laughs> And um, uh, due to the, the Sith rebellions, I think there is there will always that kind of stuff, you know. Um, um, Sith is, I think Sith came because uh, the satisfact the dissatisfaction of of Jedi followers that they become the holier of you know I'm holier than two kind of community, you know. We're the enlightened one, and you're not. If you're not following us, then you're not uh, uh, considered as as blast or enlightened. You know, the force won't help you that way. And Sith kind of, you know, no, no, we can do it this way. You know, the force doesn't really care. Um, that's kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. There's always uh, no, two I mean, sides of. Yeah, it, it's. It, no, you're right. I mean, it's basically accepting reality. Reality is basically that we are all, we all have a dark side, we all have an evil side. And to kind of understand our goodness, we got to understand our dark side. You got to understand where our anger comes from, our hate, how we're suffering, why we are suffering. And the Jedi philosophy is okay for people who really don't want to do anything with their lives, I guess, you know, who don't want to help others, who don't want to be with others. But with the Sith philosophy, it kind of helps people kind of move along and and, and kind of uh, become stronger. Become stronger, yeah. 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 Brother, you're uh, Indonesia. You're in, you said you're just in, outside Jakarta? Or... Yeah, I'm, I'm currently outside Jakarta. I'm, I'm, I'm having this kind of social project, uh, helping uh, restructuring Sandren in this area. And yeah, I've been here for months, maybe a year, a year or so. Oh. I, I know you guys, uh, Paul, you guys, uh, you guys get down there. When was it? Right? To Indonesia? Yeah, yeah, we've been there. Yeah, we've been there a few yeah. times. I've been more times than me. I wanna. I want to. Uh, one day we'll join you. We'll. Uh, I want to meet some Silat, some Silat brothers. Fantastic. You should. You should. Awesome. You yeah. should. Um, Check will want to meet those guys as well, and you know, he just doesn't really express that much. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, Ustad Abasi is trying to radicalize us. <laughs> I think so. I think so. He's uh, he's doing takia. You know, he's doing the taqiyya <laughs> that uh, this is what this is what, you know, Darth Sidious, right? This is what he did. He masqueraded as the emperor, right? And he used his taqiyya to trick the people. And then he revealed himself. In fact, you can say Darth Sidious is like Dajjal. <laughs> My God, my God. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm going there. I'm taking it <laughs> okay. up. I'm... You, you go, okay, fine. fine. Well, actually, let's, um, let, let, let's before go. we go let's, to let's... that, you know, there's something that Sunny mentioned about ignorance. And mm -hmm. it goes further than what Sunny said, because Yoda did not actually just leave out the ignorance part. He actually deliberately kept his students in ignorance of the dark side. He, they were not allowed. They were actually banned 
from studying the dark side at all um, until later on. Eventually, he learned his mistake and relented and allowed Luke to enter the cave of the Sith. But for a long time, he told him not to do anything to do with that. You must be absolutely always be aware of the dark side of the force. But this, there is something, if we think about the dark side, it's kind of like the shadow that Carl Jung would have described. The fact that we all have that shadow within inside our own psyche, psyche. You know, and if we are not aware of that, that we have the potentiality to be like angels or the potentiality to be like devils, then we're not we're not aware of our true nature. We need to be aware of that in order to protect ourselves from it and or from its its worst excesses, because within moderation, passion is not a bad thing. Within moderation, love is not a bad thing. But these were things that the, the Jedi actually frowned upon and they, they tried to keep people like monks, which there is a which is not a good thing. It's it's an extreme take on it. I mean, maybe as yeah, Muhammad, it is, it is. Pray, Jedi. Uh, yeah, it is somewhere in the middle is is more balanced. Yeah, of course. There is a quote here. It says, uh, I, I'm looking at uh, Yoda says to the shadow of his soul, part of me you are, yes, but power over me you have not. Yeah, yeah. Through patience and training, it is I who control you. And we know this in the whole Sufi controlling of the nafs yeah. and ego. Right, and we recognize that we are created with this nature. It's not that you're you're going to be free of this nature. Allah has created us with this nature within us, and the yeah. whole point is that you know it obviously doesn't overpower us. That's ultimately uh, ultimately the goal is that you know you don't become a Sith. Well, it's uh, as Fulana Sheikh Nasim, he likened it to a dragon. And if you if you if you can tame that dragon, you control that dragon, you can ride that dragon, and it will make you powerful, but in a good way, like powerful against the wrong things, powerful in your life to be successful. But on the other hand, if you let that dragon control you, it will destroy you, it'll eat you alive. Right. We're finished. The 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 thing is, you know, if you if you actually meditate, meditate. Um, and there is a meditation that I. I have learned and I teach that meditation to people once a week and not more than that. And it's called the dark meditation. It's not about evil or anything like that. It's about understanding your emotions. It's going real deep down in your emotions and confronting your emotions. You know, anger, hate, love. But love is actually an emotion. <clears throat> and there's so many other emotions in there. And the thing is, when we begin to confront these emotions, we can, um, <coughs> sorry, I've, uh, my, 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 the throat is dry. I haven't even drank any water this morning. And obviously I can't water until three hours from now <laughs> because of uh, Ramadan. But what I'm saying is to confront your emotions, understand your emotions, you have to be able to live them within you. And this is where, for example, where the Sith say, talk about um, fear, anger, suffering, etc. We're all human beings. We all fear. There's anger within us and surrounding us in other people. We need to understand this. We need to kind of go deep into our meditative modes, meditation, in prayer, etc. We need to confront this. We need to understand it. And we need to be able to use these emotions in a positive way to live positively and humanely okay and we can call ourselves Seth or Jedi or great Jedi or whatever that's or Sufis or whatever that's a separate issue but at the same time we need to understand these to realize how other people who do not understand these are suffering and how they can become radicalized by extremists whether they're Isis or Jedi nationalist it's an interesting one with, oh, with Yoda and it's, <laughs> fear leads to anger and stuff because actually Yoda feared the dark side so it yeah. did lead to anger it led to suffering yeah <laughs> he actually did the very thing he was telling people not to do well, I mean, the, the other yeah. thing is, you know, this thing about equality, um, one of the quotes by the Sith is equality is a myth to protect the weak some of us are strong in the force others are not only a fool believes otherwise and in the same way there's no such thing as equality 
for any of us. We can strive towards equality and impartiality. That doesn't mean that we kind of um, boost our own egos and let our egos control us and then put other people down. But just to be in that kind of uh, mental state, knowing that no one is equal. I'm not equal to you. You're not equal to me. We're not equal to each other. But there's a reason for that. And this thing, the idea of the force, Allah, is created us like this for a reason. So there's multiple ways that we can understand each other and understand what life is supposed to be about. So there is a place for the Seth. There is a place for the Jedi. There is a place for the Grey Jedi. Awesome. Yeah. All right, folks. But anyway, yeah. We gotta, uh, I got I got to go because if I don't then this uh, this this Sith Jedi guy here is not going to be able to eat food at uh, <laughs> at uh, in in about 3 hours time because I got to get the uh, uh, iftari stuff done. Nice. You got to get the bread. Brother, this, yeah. this was fun. This was fun. <laughs> Next no, time we'll do this a, was uh, fun, and uh, yeah, let's do let's do another one uh, soon. But uh, do do keep my, my lightsabers in the other room. I would have I would have kind of you know waved it around right now, but <laughs> too no, much energy to get up. That. No, no, you shouldn't do that whilst you're fasting because it's haram. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, well, thank you for joining us, guys. All right, it's brother. been a fascinating conversation. All right. Uh, that was oh, fun. Do another one sometime. Hey, that was fun. Inshallah. We'll chat again, you brother. Take care. Okay, so I'm on it. Thanks, Moving. Yeah. Thanks, Annie. Thanks, guys. Thanks.